if you're still running drones and you have staff on your payroll to get shots like this, my question to you is, why? If you're the talent and you can film yourself, then film yourself. Do it with one camera. No licenses, no headaches. One big selfie stick and a 360 camera that can see everything in vivid detail. If you're an up and coming filmmaker or content creator and you're still using cell phones and a GoPro to do all your filming, then you're behind. You need something that's gonna truly bring your stuff to the next level. So if you're ready, watch this. So here it is, this is the camera. If you wanna get this camera, there's a special link down below. If you click that link, you'll get a free gift with your purchase. Check it out. I know this is not the norm for what we do on this channel and truly I wasn't even going to show you guys because I didn't want the secret to get out and how I really did everything but since you know Insta360 has kind of hooked me up with quite a few cameras now and has wanted me to drop this video here it is. I'm going to slowly ease you in from beginner to advanced. You probably saw this shot all over Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. You saw people recording themselves you didn't really understand why or how you just saw a shadow of a stick but you saw nothing else and at that one moment I thought to myself finally. I don't have to bribe my family to follow me around with an iPhone or a camera. I can just have something sit there and record me and record everything I'm doing and I can edit the direction and keyframe. I actually made a video on my other channel of how to do that too and I'll leave it here for you. But right now, let's see. This was fairly easy. Anybody can do this. Anybody can get great shots like this. What really impressed me was this. The only other footage of this actual product is with an underwater drone. And it does not look this good or get this close. And it doesn't record any sound underwater. But you can hear everything here. And I can pair this with my top footage. That's very impressive. The action cameras of old had a good run. They paved the way for us. But that is just it. They're old. And what's new is phenomenal. What is new can change the entire direction of your filmmaking ventures and your content creation. One thing I really liked about the X3 was I don't always want it in 360 mode. There are some instances like this where I just want a straight 180 single lens camera mode. This is the most favored mode we have on the Yolo Tech for a boat when you're doing fishing and you want this kind of third person view. This is what the GoPros are notorious for. I would say the only advantage that the GoPro had over this was that you can remove the battery so the camera doesn't overheat as fast, which happens pretty fast in the sunlight. If they just had like a dummy battery to put in the slot to waterproof the camera while just running it out of the USB-C port like you used to do with the GoPros, this would be pretty unstoppable. You could definitely use it for everything. I generally use this in 360 mode anyways, but for single lens mode, it's pretty good. But they actually have a camera called the Go series that it's specifically a static lens and it does a really good job of just being that. For me, I really love the 360 feature because it offers things that, well, look at this. My son's just holding this stick. He's got no experience with the 360 camera and I got all these shots just because he held it while I reeled the fish in. As long as the camera is in the general vicinity and fairly straight, you get the shot. It will also do time lapse in single lens or 360 mode. I prefer 360 mode because you can make a moving time lapse. More to come from this later on in the video, but right now let's compare a drone shot to an Insta360 X3 aerial shot. I personally think if you're a hobbyist looking to do drone stuff, the DJI Mini 3 Pro is probably the best all around drone you could get, period. But why even get one of those when you could just get one of these and do the exact same thing and probably in better detail, much safer. You don't have to worry about it flying in the water, crashing into people, you don't have to worry about licenses, insurance. I mean, it's just a camera. You stick in a gigantic selfie pole and you can get aerial shots just like you got with the drone. The whole selfie stick disappears. I mean, sure you can't get really far away shots. I mean, the only reason you'd even need a drone at this point in time is if you have a shot and you absolutely cannot be there physically to get it or hold the stick up. Other than that, why would you even use one? There's no annoying propeller blades. There's no risk. There's none of that. This even records all the sound in pure quality. Like it makes total sense to make this camera a priority for aerial shots over the drone. As far as low light situations, eh. You can't go too far past the evening without a lot of light. The camera does require a lot of light to look its best, but they do have a one inch edition that has a bigger sensor and it does record much better footage due to its larger sensor. It's just not waterproof, so you just gotta watch it when you're on the water like this. But what about underwater shots? It is actually IP68 rated, but 
why even risk it when you have a dome that you can just stick it in there and it's completely waterproof up to a pretty substantial depth you see a lot of divers using these and for these specifically for product reviews on motors like this e-propulsion electric outboard we got pretty substantial footage on the water with it like that and about the clearest water we could find we also got moving shots and it's pretty hard to get moving shots effectively in the water because the drag and the pressure the water puts on the camera it's really hard to drag one sideways to get this sideways shot but because the camera can see everything you can just point the camera in post and there you go side shot without having to really worry too much. I mean, the camera itself is cylindrical and it's kind of aerodynamic. My bigger thing versus the bulkier, like GoPro style looking action cameras that would just absolutely drag and never get this shot correctly. And then there's the matter of the 8K time-lapse. My favorite thing about this camera probably to date, 8K time-lapse. You know what you can get with 8K time-lapse? Anything, all kinds of B-roll, all kinds of DIY stuff that drags. You can speed it up and you'll still see everything you need to see. I think this is my favorite thing because it's this feature that consistently makes me the most money filmmaking. But let's put this out there. I do this for a living. And when I go on trips to go film stuff, I mean, it's just me or just me and another guy. Sometimes my crew jumps in. I mean, all of us are pretty savvy at it, but normally it's me doing it all. We don't have an extra film crew and we don't need to rent an extra boat to follow us to get these shots or have somebody fly a drone while the talent actually is on the boat doing what they're gonna do. We can just do it all. Why do we need anybody else? I even gave this camera on a selfie stick to a long-term friend of mine, Anthony Jones, and he, this is just him trying to pull around and he accidentally got the best footage of the whole shoot just by, I don't know, twirling the whole stick around the boat and getting a pan of us while we were driving away. Another thing a drone cannot do is audio. It's impossible. Even if it wanted to, it couldn't because those fan blades sound like a swarm of bees coming right at you. But with this thing, you can get all the audio. No more having to pair audio from another camera just to make it sound like you got the whole shot in one thing. It just actually happens this time, the right way. And especially for this shot, where actually you need a pretty skilled drone technician to actually get a mobile aerial 360 version of this without actually crashing into the boat or messing up or having to reframe. To actually get a clear cinematic 360 push, all we had to do was put this clip in the editor and push the target lock and it locked me the whole time and did all that for me. And then I just rendered it. Now I'm using it in the video. It's because of these clips that we can get as a minimalist filmmaking crew that these cameras are invaluable. They are also extremely low profile and can be flown anywhere. Here we are with that giant selfie stick again, getting shots inside of Bass Pro Shops. I even infiltrated the small little aquarium river thing they got going on. Probably not terribly smart because the snook legit looked like it wanted to eat the camera. So I took it right out of there. I just started filming other stuff. But let's go ahead and leave this store and take this camera all the way to Florida where we're gonna do another shoot and we're gonna use some different tools to get specific shots. Florida's awesome. Here we are with Justin Lammers from Kayak DIY and we are filming a shoot on some of the scuba gear he has. Theoretically, the camera is waterproof and the pool is shallow enough that we could run this without the dome, but just for safety reasons we ran it. It will mess with the stitching, but so far all we've shown you is stuff with a selfie stick. Let's check out another unique tool that you can use with this camera. The chesty and the head strap have been long time favorite attachments for action cameras, but this one I think beats them both quite convincingly. It's a moldable, detachable, very quick release, one that goes around your neck. It's not weighing, it doesn't bother you, you barely even know what's on, and it's actually really good for the camera's long, awkward motion. It just gets it completely out of the way. We're out here in this special place Justin knew about. It's in the Florida mangroves. Man, this place is awesome. I really want to fly a drone all over it, but it's doom, it's suicide to do it on a kayak in this. We'll never get it, if we get it to go up, well, there's no chance we can recover it. So 
we used a selfie stick sticking out of one of the rod holders of the kayak and got all this footage. Shots like these make you really just never want to have to deal with the hassle of flying a drone again. Why do it when you just get stuff like this? And this. Once you record it all, the camera footage is yours to do with as you want, to point it and direct it and be creative however you see fit. Do something traditional or do something more trendy like this. It's all up to you. Here's Justin who put this camera on his action camera mount on the kayak. And so let's get his feedback on what he thought of the camera. Hey, how did you like the Insta 360? Oh, this, this thing's awesome. Like this simplifies recording so much. The biggest reason why I like it as like a YouTuber, YouTuber and content creator is that I don't have to frame the shots when I'm having fun on like the kayak and everything. I just kind of set it there. And then in post, after I get home and I've had the fun, then I get to actually like edit the video and I can choose what the camera sees. So basically it makes it to where I'm actually out there having fun, not just filming. Because otherwise before I had to set up cameras. Oh, and drone shots. Like I have a drone, but now I never use a drone because it's so hard to like launch a drone from a kayak, but I can get the drone shots with this. All right guys, there you have it. Now you know my secret, this is how I primarily film. These cameras have taken over my entire way I film everything. And I've got a lot of cameras, but these just seem to be the ones I use the most. Stay tuned for more footage. If you want this camera, please check it out in the description area in the comment section below. You click that promo code, you get a free gift with your purchase. Thank you guys, take care, see ya.